Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I was chatting to my buddy Whit Reese today on Facebook and saying how I was in the mood to do a video but just kind of ran out of ideas. I've reviewed everything, reposed everything, done photo sessions with figures recently and I kind of hit the wall. Got a lot of stuff coming to the channel very very soon but right now the cre uh, creative juices are flowing but just lack of ideas. So anyway Whit Reese suggested a cool thing. Uh, why don't I just go through all the figures and explain any modifications that have been done little enhancements and swapping of parts all that kind of stuff just little things i've done to make the figure a little bit better and i'll go through everything individually as quickly as i can i won't try to spend any longer than uh, like a minute on each figure i don't want it to end up being an hour long video I'm aiming for about half an hour so i'm going to take each figure down if it hasn't had any mods of any kind like that one for example i'll just leave that out of the video because there's no point talking about it we've got too much to cover so Whit Reese, thank you very much for a cool idea. I hope this helps the community. I've done some quite a few modification videos. I guess the most popular one or most famous one now is the beef mod for the BVS Batman here. So we'll talk about that once I get him down on the desk. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad that you know I can help out or inspire you guys to take those extra little steps. They're not always as um, treacherous as you think. Some mods are quite scary to do, I admit that, and I'll tell you about those when we get to them. Uh, but some are very easy to do and certainly do enhance the piece. So we'll get started with uh, something easy, maybe these two over here. And I hope I can cover everything for you. Hope you find it informative and enjoyable to watch. And yeah, don't forget to light up that comment section and let me know uh, how I'm doing here. Because I'd uh, love to hear from you guys. All right, let's get started. All right, so the Hot Toys Arkham Knight Batman and the Futura Batman version here. Now, this is such a minor little thing. It's barely even worth including them in the video. But just so you know how the cape uh, drapes the way it does, uh, that's just with a paper clip or two uh, at the back just to kind of control all that excess cape action because otherwise it does spread out quite unnaturally. Uh, so it's a bit messy at the back, but the main thing was, see, there's actually three of them being used here. I'm certainly not the first to do this. I remember seeing Clipper King do it and a few other guys do it. I can't honestly remember. It's been so many years who was the first. Uh, so, I mean, I ain't claiming that one. It's got to be someone else did it before me. But it's a very handy little uh, trick just to control your Batman cape and get it looking a bit more uh, naturally kind of falling behind him. Just when you're viewing it from, you know, the front or askew, uh, it works pretty well. All right, so that's the only thing that's been done to those. The Hot Toys Arkham City Batman, pretty heavily modified. We have a Jackson XU custom cape. I repainted all of the dark blue sections, like the armor here, the cowl, this section here as well. Uh, the underwear bit, I guess you call it, is shin gauntlets, the boots. All of that has been painted a matte black because I wanted him to look more like he does in the remastered version of Arkham Asylum. with The black and gray rather than the dark blue and gray. Just not quite as intimidating as the black and gray for me. So I've also gone over the whole suit here, this kind of lighter color section with like a black wash paint just to bring out the detail, make him look a little bit more worn in and weathered. So that is everything that's been done to him. Obviously finer details have been done with the uh, kind of gauntlets looking all worn and scraped. That was with um, like a dry brush silver paint, uh, also on the knuckle dusters and anywhere where you'd want there to be. Uh, just a bit of weathering and time and age. The Hot Toys Batman Returns and the 89 Batman by Hot Toys. Uh, the only thing that I've done to them is give them custom capes. Now I believe uh, one's by Jackson XU and the other one's by Unreal Customs. Got quite a few different versions, uh, wired versions, drape versions like these. Um, so that is the only thing I've done. And again, you can contact Jackson on Facebook or Unreal Customs on Facebook. Both really wonderful people who do great work when it comes to custom capes. Now, as usual, a little bit of a paper clip or hair clip situation at the back, just to bring in some of the excess cape, uh, just so it looks as nice and clean as it does from the front view here. So obviously without that paper clip, it would just bellow out a bit more and you could probably tweak it by using the arms to calm it down. But I just prefer this technique. It just looks neater from the front. Uh, and on this one, I went for the over the shoulder look just because I really like the uh, original 1989 uh, suit design. So is that everything that's been done to them? Yes, I believe it is. All right, moving on. All right, here we have the Hot Toys Deadpool from the first Deadpool film. Uh, he's had a fair bit done to him. He has a bit of a beef mod, like with the BVS Batman. 
Um, some say it's not as necessary, and I go back and forth in my mind. Uh, to be honest, if I wasn't quite as lazy, I probably would have taken out the padding uh, from this section. It does make it look a bit flat, a bit lacking in uh, definition between the chest and the um, sort of midsection there. So I might just go ahead and remove the padding. I just thought before he looked a little bit, there was something off. And I think there definitely something is with version one. I haven't seen the part two figure in person, but people do say that it was improved all round. And from what I have seen, it does seem to be the case. So yeah, I've done a little beef mod here by using those flat cotton pads. Uh, I think there's just one of them underneath the suit here. Uh, in order to do that, I had to just snip uh, this bit on one side behind the neck there so that I could move that flap over and unzip him and just slip in the cotton pad to pad him out a little bit. It's quite easy. Uh, obviously, you do have to make that little cut there with the material, uh, the stitching really. You don't actually damage anything of the suit itself. You just glue it back down again afterwards. And I did totally kind of blackwash the whole suit to bring down the tone of the red. It was really bright and in the movie it's way more... Um, I know it's filters and color grading and all that, but I just wanted him to look as he does on screen. Now, uh, like with the Batman figures that I've just shown before, this LED lighting does take uh, does sort of mess with the color or how it appears on camera, but it's a much more accurate color. So that is uh, pretty much everything I've done to him. So just a bit of a repaint and padding out his chest section slightly. All right. What a figure. This is the DX11 Hot Toys Dark Knight Heath Ledger Joker. An absolute masterpiece. Um, that Oscar award there didn't come with the figure. That was actually something that came with a custom outfit for a nurse version of the Joker from the Dark Knight. Uh, I just like to keep that there because it seems appropriate. Now, the only thing I did here, and it took me a while to actually remember this, because I remember Nick brought up the subject of the the chain that hangs from his trousers look different from his DX chain. So I was racking my brains thinking, why is that? Um, but anyway, I remembered eventually that I didn't like the, the length of the DX uh, trousers. They were a little bit, in England, we call it ankle swingers where they they just not quite long enough, and you can see his ankle. Now, that may or may not be accurate in the movie. I don't know. Uh, I never really noticed that myself. But it didn't look quite right to me, so I went with the original release of the Joker, the first Heath Ledger uh, Joker that Hot Toys did in the purple famous outfit. Uh, so I kept those original Joker trousers on the DX here, just so that they um, they sit where they do, just above the shoe. And that is it. But what a, a magnificent figure. I just have to say, very much uh, looking forward to the one-fourth scale version of this guy. That's going to be coming out very soon. Looking forward to getting my hands on that. Might be worth mentioning briefly as well that I did actually burn the edges of some of the, the dollar bills and stuff. Just to make it look like a, you know, a bit more like some of the scenes in the film. Uh, I didn't actually do it to any of his playing cards, just the bills themselves. You can see on this one here how it's actually singed around the edges. Just a little touch, but it's something that as someone who come around to look at your collection, they get up close with it and they're admiring all the detail, and then they look down and see the money is actually burnt, and that just registers, and you think to yourself, oh, well, another little detail. But that's actually a modification there to the existing money that you get with the figure. All right. All right, and on to the Jared Leto Jokers that I have in the collection. Now, yep, <laughs> as you probably saw around Christmas time, uh, me and Nick, I, I love listening to Nick talk about how much he hates these, but um, I just, you know, they're just works of art, man. And I just wanted to uh, point out that they have had their heads swapped around here. So the modifications uh, that have been done here are quite essential, very necessary with this guy. But just to let you know for sure, in case you're you're thinking you'd get yours looking like this, um, these heads have been swapped around. So that more serious head actually comes on the tuxedo version, and that crazy manic smile version it actually belongs with this purple goat version. Uh, but other than that, no modifications have been done to the uh, tuxedo version here. It's just literally swapped the heads around. But look at that thing, man. Just look at the life. I mean, look at that. That looks so real. It's just, uh, believe me, I have been selling some stuff recently just out of space and necessity, but I've been looking at these guys thinking I could sell both of these in one go because they've had um, some custom pieces like these trousers don't come with this figure. I had to get them separately. 
um you know so i could make a fair bit of money with these guys but i just can't bring myself to do it um regardless of how people feel about the film they're just as figures they're just works of art these are some of the best looking pieces i have in my collection but anyway that's all that's been done to him so this is the real um mod heavy figure here so he comes with um some batman skin tight sort of leggings and boxing shorts that go over the top of the leggings. So he won't come with these Arkham Asylum um, sweatpants, whatever you want to call them. I got them from 16kit.com. Um, and I believe the feet came with that as well. And a straight jacket. So that's the situation there. There is a major issue with the inner lining of this purple coat staining the body underneath really badly. So there is a video on the channel already explaining exactly how to do this, but I have put two layers of different material to protect him, create a barrier between the jacket and the skin of the figure uh, to prevent any staling. And I did check it recently and everything seems fine still. So um, yeah, but definitely there is a specific video for that on the channel. You need to watch that rather than just watch this and then go and try and do it yourself. Um, make sure you watch the actual video. So yeah, a head swap between these two, that's what's been done there. The uh, technique to protect the body from the staining jacket and taking away the leggings and the boxing shorts and the boots that he wears and going for that more kind of promotional image. The poster of him uh, before the film came out, he was wearing this particular outfit with the chains, the purple coat, these Arkham pants and bare feet. So uh, that's what I've done with him. I hope I've remembered to mention everything there. But that is everything that's been done with those guys. Oh, before I forget, that custom-made meat cleaver there, that's actually metal and wood. Uh, that was made by James Hodds on Facebook. That's H-O-D-D-S. And he's the one that made the meat cleaver, so you wouldn't get that with your Joker. That is a custom weapon that I just felt like putting in his hands. Now, for Harley Quinn, rather than take them individually over to the desk, I think I'll just literally talk about them where they are on the shelves here. It's a bit complicated, but uh, I'll start with uh, this one over here. Now, this was the first release. Now, I'll just get this out of the way. That head sculpt has been swapped, um, and that is the head sculpt that actually comes with this body. However, it does not come with a tongue. Well, it does, but it's inside the mouth. This is a custom tongue made by Andy Hibbs on Facebook and Instagram, and it's incredible. It really just gives her a whole new kind of attitude she's already looking very kind of uh, well the mouth's wide open she's laughing she's looking to the side there's a lot of expression there uh, but with the option of the custom you know tongue that you can just look uh, you can put a little bit of blue tack or there's actually a little bit of pink blue tack or, or pink tack <laughs> that uh, Andy Hibbs sent along so that I could put the tongue in there and it's um it's just amazing it really looks cool so that head belongs on that body this head I bought separately, I believe, from Craig Gant on Facebook. So I just bought the head uh, just because I wanted to have it. But I didn't want to buy the whole figure that that head comes with, the prison version. I just couldn't justify it to myself. I just didn't want it. But I did want the head sculpt for swapping options. So uh, I did do a little mod with the belt um, to make it sit at the right position. I can't remember what I did now. But there is a video specifically on that on my channel, which you can find pretty easily. Uh, so anything else I've done here? I don't think so. Just the head swap and the belt mod. So that's her taken care of. There is a tiny little mod that I've done to this Harley because I wanted to try and cover as many joints as possible, which uh, I've done using her watches, her bracelet there, the other um, bracelet. And the one thing I did was this ankle joint here is covered up by that bit of jewelry. Uh, but this one was exposed, so I just used a little bit of black ribbon and then I used some gold uh, kind of sparkly paint stuff and I just created a little kind of, you know, black ankle ribbon thing just to cover up the joint, keep it looking seamless and it also ties in nicely to the black and gold dress. So that's the only thing I did to her. Awesome, stunning piece right there. Very uh, unappreciated when it was released, but over time, well, maybe not, but... It's absolutely stunning. There's no doubt about it. Okay, and this version is... And this version, like I said, head swap uh, going on there between these... Fuck. 
So this version, you've got your uh, your head sculpt from the first release from Hot Toys, the custom tongue from Andy Hibbs. This body is the prison version of Harley Quinn body. It doesn't have any tattoos on it yet because she hadn't had them yet. Uh, these Batman leggings are the ones that came with the Joker that I mentioned about earlier. And um, the bare feet are also from the prison version of Harley. And this jacket, the gloves, um, are from this version. They're extra bits of uh, accessories and clothing that come with the first release. So on the bra, came with a Fiasin female body a long time ago. Just had that lying around. Uh, anything else? Anything else? I think that is it. Yes, I believe it is. All right, so yes, there is the Harley Quinn collection and every modification so far. Two one six scale Catwoman figures, very much inspired by Adam Hughes' uh, famous artwork now. Now, they were very much originally Sideshow Collectibles one six scale Catwoman figures. However, both heads have been repainted by the Effects Laboratory. You can find them on Facebook and did a great job repainted the eyes green. Redid the eye makeup, the lipstick, everything. Like you can see, the cheeks have a bit of uh, like a what would you call it, like a blusher or something on the cheeks, just to bring a face to life a little bit. Uh, swapped out the bodies for fire sin bodies because the sideshow Catwoman bodies were really fragile and just broke straight away. And the outfit that's a official sideshow collectibles outfit, but this is a custom made, very much inspired by Adam Hughes Catwoman. Uh, cat suit here and that was by Gwyneth on Facebook uh, there is um, a specific review on this outfit on the channel as well as many other videos to do with these figures but if you want to uh, get a link to Gwyneth you can always uh, check out that video and I'm pretty sure there's a link to her on Facebook on there so we have sideshow boots uh, these boots are Fiasin Vampirella boots I wanted to change out between the two so that they had different styles and what else have we got here any other custom things going on um, I think, yes, uh, Gwyneth also made these uh, leathery gauntlets. So not only did she make the amazing outfit, which is just perfect. I mean, it really does have that shiny effect, just like the Adam Hughes artwork. Amazing stuff. Really, really well done. Very tempted to... Uh, well, I have actually gotten in touch with Gwyneth recently, asking about a few other future projects, because you uh, you get caught up with other stuff in the hobby and you forget you know some of the amazing feats that some of these people out here are capable of and you think to yourself i need to get back to them they're uh they're capable of doing amazing stuff so a uh, shout out to gwyneth but yeah body swapped out for fire sin heads repainted uh, let me just give you a close-up on those nice green eyes you can see much more detail in the face this one over here absolutely stunning the eyes are just incredible you see the eyelashes the eye makeup just as I requested it, the effects of the laboratory were really nice uh, with communication when they were being repainted. Kept me up to date the whole time. I'm very happy with that. Now, I have also got some spare uh, Sideshow Catwoman heads that I experiment uh, did experiments myself and just uh, wanted to do a battle damage version here. As you can see, a bit of blood dripping from the mouth. I'll show you that one out of the bag in a minute. And what else have we got? Oh, this is uh, something I was quite proud of. I wanted uh, a version that reminded me of the version from Arkham City with the hair showing underneath the uh, the goggles. So that's something I did myself. And I think this is a spare one. I haven't actually done anything to. That's just a stock spare Catwoman head. So future project probably with that one. I'll show you how they look with these heads on. Okay, so there is the head sculpt. This is the first one that I attempted any kind of customization with. I repainted the lips, uh, added the hair coming from underneath the cowl, so you can see the hair. It's not going to focus if I go close up for some reason. I have to film it from back here. But let me just put it on the uh, the body. I think this might need a bit of an adjustment. It doesn't seem to fit on there very well. I mean, it might do. You might need, just need to force it down a little bit. But that's how that looks. So th she's actually got blue eyes. So it's cool, you've got the uh, the green-eyed version or a blue-eyed version with hair showing, which is different from all the other ones. Now we have the battle damage version. Let's get that out. All right, so there is my kind of battle damage head sculpt. The makeup around the eyes is a lot messier. 
the blood dripping from the side of the mouth, the scratches on her cheek, or um, if you want, you can just put the goggles down and have uh, that kind of look instead. That needs to be adjusted slightly, but it's a pretty cool option. All right, so that's it with those. Moving on. Hot Toys Batman Begins Demon Batman. Fantastic piece. You don't see it in too many people's collections, and I just think it's incredible. I mean, look at that. It is greatly, greatly enhanced by a custom cape here, which I actually made myself. This is um, something I used to do back in the day. I uh, would take the Takara Batman Begins official figure cape and use it as a stencil to cut around a big piece of black velvet. And then I would have myself a custom 1-6 scale velvet cape for the Batman figures. Uh, over time, I learned that the velvet material was better suited to the 1 4 scale. It was more in scale with a 1 4 scale figure. The 1 6, it could sometimes be a bit too thick for those. But with this guy, it just worked out fine. And to get this effect, it's actually um, like knife slits in the cape and taking a lighter. Now, I don't recommend people do this, especially if you're under like 18 or something. Be very careful with fire. It is dangerous. So um, I never actually come into contact with the velvet material with the naked flame. It's literally just getting the uh, flame close enough to the velvet to actually melt it. And that is how you get an effect like that there, which looks really kind of cool and suits the demon very well. So you've got a combination of melting from fire, uh, slitting from knives, um, maybe some other techniques were used. It was a long time ago that I did this, but definitely one of the uh, essential grail pieces in the collection that I'd never part with. Um, that is the only thing I've done. I do believe I probably removed his gauntlets and his hands. Yes, I did to uh, just keep it streamlined because if you're going to be displaying your Batman with this kind of Batman Begins brooding look, uh, you might as well get rid of the gauntlets because it just catches on the cape and can sometimes be a bit problematic, but no one will know and it will look uh, clean. You know what, I almost forgot about some of these figures that are actually in my bedroom because there's no room for them in the collection room. So there's a couple of little bits and pieces just scattered around here. Uh, but you've got a Hot Toys Maleficent figure with a completely repainted head sculpt and that is absolutely amazing. You've got a version of Snake from uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. And that was very complicated to put together. I can't even remember most of that information right now. I have a video on the channel explaining all of that. So just go looking for the video. There's about two or three videos on that subject. And you can check that out. Uh, and there is the uh, sort of version that you get from Hot Toys. Kind of stripped it of all its kind of good stuff. That ended up going on the camo version which I created. So, And you have... Uh, Eric Draven from Hot Toys, that's the crow. The only thing that's really modified on him is a hand that I customized to have a bullet hole in it, which you can't see too clearly right now, but that's the only thing that's been modified on him. And that, I believe, is everything. Well, everything apart from Ruby, anyway. Here's Ruby. Here's Ruby. Little white strippers. Hmm? Oh, she's so pretty, so pretty. <laughs> now here we have the Ninja Batman. This was an amazing gift from Alex McPhee for my birthday. And it's now one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Now, the reason it is included in this video is because there has been a head swap. There, it was originally a Ra's al Ghul uh, League of Shadows figure. So you had a Liam Neeson likeness under there. And I've swapped it out with a head sculpt from Nick Edwards. That was um, right around the same time. Was it Christmas, actually? Yeah, it was a Christmas gift uh, from Nick. A head play Christian Bale head sculpt. So there is actually a Christian Bale head under there now. So that is the only mod that's been done to him. But that is a spectacular piece. That's from my favorite film, Batman Begins. And it's an absolutely awesome figure. 
But yes, the only thing that's been done is the head swap to make him into a proper Bruce Wayne League of Shadows figure. Spectacular. All right, here we have Bruce Wayne in his final form in Batman Begins. My favorite bat suit of all time from my favorite Batman film of all time. This was a gift from Derek Fagan in the USA. And if you're watching this, Derek, massive shout out to you. I can't believe you were so awesome to do this. I just love this piece. Uh, I actually owned this many years ago and stupidly sold it. Once I got the, the big versions, you know, the Enter Bay Batman up there, I kind of didn't really see a reason to keep the smaller ones, but then I started to build up the collection of one six scale Batmans and I thought now I'm missing my favorite one. Um, so Derek Fagan came through with that and just amazing gift. Thank you so much, Derek. So what I've done to this guy is quite extensive. I have uh, completely resprayed the cowl with a nice black matte black spray paint uh, just to freshen that up. Swapped out the gauntlets for Takara gauntlets because they're much shinier and much harder. Uh, they don't sort of... Uh, not like the Hot Toys ones where they're really soft on the actual gauntlet blades. They're actually really tough. Uh, swapped out the boots for Medicom uh, boots. These are the ones that came with the Dark Knight suit figure. Uh, the Medicom release. They did do a Batman Begins as well, but I used to own the, the Dark Knight suit by them. Uh, these boots are just a totally different material. It's more of a hard plastic kind of vinylish kind of material. Whereas the ones that come with this guy are very rubbery and uh, just not very stable. So I definitely prefer these much tougher feeling and shinier firmer um medicom dark knight boots the cape is the takara batman begins figure cape which to this day you know as far as official companies making a batman figure this is still probably top of the heap it's amazing this cape and i have always used it i used to use it as a stencil to cut around velvet and make my own capes uh, it's just perfect so i uh, possibly might have used a dx um 12 batman belt on this guy so i believe that's everything that's been done but there he is one hell of a figure okay this figure has been heavily customized this is a hot toys one six scale suicide squad joker figure and it's named the batman imposter now what i did is i removed the mouth plate that comes with this guy that is meant to be jared leto's joker inside this suit uh, and I put in a spare Ben Affleck mouth plate and painted it like the Joker and switched out the stock cape for a Jackson XU custom cape, which I then sprayed purple and weathered and um, just basically repainted the whole figure and just, you know, created something pretty unique. Um, I don't know of any other figures like this that exist. I think to my, you know, this best of my knowledge, I think this is the only one of these in the world right now. It's absolutely incredible, and I'm so happy with it, and I just, I'm very, very proud of this one. But we have uh, Fake Blood, which I got from uh, James Hodds, I think it was, when he sent me his uh, custom weaponry. That blood is very realistic, it's very wet looking, and once it dries, it kind of just solidates and doesn't get, you know, it's really dry, it's not sticky, uh, and it just looks really brutal. There is... Quite a few videos on the channel of this piece if you want to check it out in more detail. Uh, much deeper kind of explanation as to what everything is and everything that was done. But that is a very heavily customized figure. Very, very proud of that one. It's absolutely unique and very awesome. All right, now here we have the Hot Toys Dawn of Justice or BVS Batman. One of the best Batman figures ever made by the company. Uh, just so much fun to pose. No real stresses with uh, areas of the suit getting damaged if you pose him. Very tough, very movable, and very just impressive to look at. Now, there's a fair bit going on here. This is actually, um, you know, one of the mod videos I did in the past that's proven to be the most popular, which was the, the beef mod for this particular figure, and that involved... Uh, taking the cowl off and just unzipping him at the back. Uh, I think there was a tiny little thread, like a lot of people were having trouble, including myself. I think if you go back and watch the tutorial video on how to do it, it's on the channel. Uh, there was a tiny little thread of material that was blocking the zip from coming down. And you need to just cut that and then the zip comes down and goes back up freely. And you can just um, insert these flat round about yay big cotton pads and I did stuff about two of them down his front 
uh, or maybe it was three. I mean, I really wanted to beef him up. As you can see here, he's very bulky. Uh, just looks a lot more accurate to how he appeared in the movie. Uh, there's also one of my favorite custom capes on him, and it's the first version of a custom cape that Unreal Customs made for this figure. They've done quite a few since. Jackson XU has done some amazing capes for this figure as well. But this was the very first custom cape I ever received. And it was from Unreal Customs. And there's just something about the way it looks, the texture, the weight, the thickness. Uh, and I love the way you have to kind of create the pleats yourself. Uh, so this has always been my favorite cape uh, for this particular Batman. I did actually cut some length away. This was a fair bit longer. I think it came to about there. Uh, so I just went around, cut it all the way. Um, that's something you have to kind of be careful of as well. You need to cut this cape while it's kind of in this position. You want to get it the way it should be and then cut it. If you lay this cape flat on a table and then cut around, it's not going to work. It's not going to look right when you put it back on the figure. Uh, you have to get the pleats in position, get everything falling where you want it to fall, and then you go along and cut it like this. And I weathered the edges as well to make it look like it had been dragged through the mud. So we've got a custom cape. The tab here was always uh, unsightly to me. I didn't like the way it sticked up. Uh, so I used a little bit of glue and I've glued it down permanently. I can still kind of flip the head off, but it has to be from the back and then it kind of flaps over and I can still replace the eyes and, um, you know, do things I need to do if I need to do them. Uh, everything down here is stock. Uh, I haven't repainted anything. Literally just the beef mod to beef up his chest and a custom cape and gluing down the tab to create a more realistic flush look. And I believe that's everything for him. Another absolute incredible piece. Nightmare Batman from Dawn of Justice. The only things I've done here is again, the beef mod on the chest section. Same thing as with the Dawn of Justice. Just unzip him at the back and push down those, you know, flat cotton pads. You can actually get a look at those in the original uh, Beef Mod tutorial video for the Dawn of Justice figure. And the jacket or coat has been swapped out for a custom one that you can get from 16kit.com. I did repaint the Hot Toys one quite extensively and it's probably in here somewhere uh, in my drawer for capes and clothing and stuff. But I'll leave that out of the video for now. But yeah, we've just got a bit of a Beef Mod going on here to beef up his chest a bit and a custom coat, like I said, from 16kit.com. This is an amazing piece. And quite long periods of time go by where I don't really even pay much attention to it anymore. It's just there on the shelf and I don't really pay much attention, but then a moment like this comes along where you have to take it down and talk about it for a moment. And as you are, you notice just, it's amazing. This is an incredible figure. Very real looking, very realistic. Absolutely awesome. Love the way the light is catching his eyes there. But yep, that's him. The Hot Toys Dawn of Justice Armored Batman. This is the first version they released. And the only thing that has been done to this guy is I bought a custom mouth plate from 16kit.com, which is this expression, which you don't actually get with the figure. But that is the famous you know the famous look from the trailers when he's looking up in the sky waiting for superman to come so he can fight him he's just got that kind of very serious neutral kind of expression on uh but hot toys didn't really give you this mouth plate so i had to get that from one six kit and this spear actually came with the battle damage version which is over there on the shelf but i haven't done any mods to the battle damage version of this figure so i've left that out of the video but i am using his spear on this version but other than that that is uh, totally stock and just an amazing piece. This stunning figure you see before you was made possible thanks to one of my patrons who wishes to remain anonymous. But I have done a head swap, so I have to let you know that early on. This head belongs on that body, and that is the head that comes on this much more vibrant and colourful version of Wonder Woman. So, I just love the way this looks with the head swap, with the sculpted hair, with the uh, you know ponytail at the back. An amazing piece, but that is the only thing I've done here. I've swapped around the head. I just wanted to include it because I, you know, I post pictures of this version on Instagram and people might think, oh, that's the version I can buy. But I just have to make it clear to you, there is a head swap 
going on here because I just wanted to, you know, experiment and see how things looked. And I really do like uh, this look for this particular figure. Now, I do have the tiara that came with the cheaper Barbie version of Wonder Woman, which I bought for parts because I knew that I could take parts of that figure and kind of repaint them and use them on my Hot Toys ones. And it did work out fantastic. But there is actually a nice uh, gold worn weathered tiara that I do use on this one. Uh, sometimes you can see that on the channel in previous videos. But no mods done other than the head swap. Um, and no mods done on her, I don't think. No, pretty much stock, just a head swap. But absolutely stunning, both of them. But this one in particular is just incredible. Look at that. Okay, the absolutely stunning Dawn of Justice version of Wonder Woman. As you can see, she still looks amazing. Look at that. That is a totally stock figure. The only reason she is in this video is because I put a little bit of hair gel in her hair to calm it down a little bit. This version stock is a little bit unruly when it comes to the hair. It's just an absolute frizz fest. Uh, but the gel has helped to calm that down. I don't think I've done anything else to her. Um, that's it. Just a bit of gel in the hair to uh, calm it down a little bit and gave it a little bit more weight as well. This angle in particular just looks incredibly good. But that's it. Moving on. Absolutely stunning custom cape here, which I believe was from Jackson XU, because I remember him talking me through the installation process on my phone when I was doing it. This was one of the more nerve wracking mods that you can do to this particular figure. Just because of the way the stock cape for him was installed into the figure, it's, it's, I can't remember exactly. You'd have to go back and watch the original video of when I actually did this. But as you can see, it does allow for some amazing poses once you get this custom cape with the wires in it. Um, it just looks incredible. Uh, that is the only thing that's been done to him. I believe I might have repainted the hair a little bit more black because his hair is jet black in the movies as far as I can see but hot toys often give you that kind of more charcoal-y kind of almost like a very 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 dark grayish kind of charcoal color and I just wanted it to be jet black so I think I might have done that to this guy definitely did it with the man of steel version but yeah the only thing that's been done to him is the custom wired cape to allow for this cool you know, kind of just hovering there. Look at that. All right, now here we have the Cool Models 1-6 scale werewolf figure, and it's amazing, this thing. I'm so glad that a company made something like this. For the longest time, I've wanted a 1-6 scale werewolf, and as you can see, it's absolutely spectacular. I wish I had two of these because I've got some mad ideas with customizations, things I'd love to do. I love the idea of a black-haired werewolf with stone white eyes, no detail, just completely white eyes, um, and sharpen his front fangs and add more blood, change the jacket, change the shirt, uh, probably leave these jeans. But I've got so many ideas for things I'd love to do to this, but because it's such a unique figure and I reckon it's going to be hard to get one of these. Look at that angle there. It's ridiculous. There's a film called Bad Moon and it's not the greatest werewolf movie ever made, but it's one of my favorites because, well, it's a good movie. Um, it's told from the perspective, well, it's based on a book called Thor, which is told from the perspective of a German shepherd dog living with its family, obviously, and one of the members of the family comes back after being away for a long time to stay with them, and he's a werewolf, and the German shepherd knows this, but can't obviously speak, so it can't tell its owners, you know, watch out, he's a werewolf, <laughs> so it's a really good film. Bad Moon, uh, amazing werewolf design, which I believe was uh, all done by Stan Winston Studios. But this werewolf looks a lot like the werewolf from Bad Moon. So uh, I absolutely love it. The reason it's in this video is because uh, this section of fur you can see here, you can see a seam here from where they're two separate pieces. That didn't come with this werewolf. This section here would have just been uh, a visible kind of human chest. Very, you know, it didn't look right. There was this really, really sudden transition from hair here to a very smooth and shiny kind of true type body that they used uh, because the shirt doesn't do up high enough to cover it up. Now, I had the idea because I had a few of these um, Sota Toys Dog Soldiers Werewolf figures and they actually have this uh, section under the head there. That bit of fur can actually be removed. So one of my spare 
dog soldier figures I actually used uh, from the gray haired version, which worked out great. So that's actually from a Sota Toys dog soldiers werewolf to enable a more kind of, uh, you know, just continuation of the hair in down to his body and gets rid of that really ugly kind of sudden transition to a true type body that you can clearly see uh, when you have this guy just stock. But I believe that is the only thing I did to this guy. I can't stress enough. Uh, we need more werewolves in the 1-6 community. But this is uh, definitely an amazing, amazing piece, which I almost just dropped. So I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Look at that thing. Forget about it. <laughs> the absolutely and amazing and essential Hot Toys 1-6 scale part diecast Robocop figure, which might as well be the real thing, shrunk down with some kind of shrinking ray. It is silly. Uh, the only thing I've done to this guy is an essential mod as far as I'm concerned because it's a perfect figure, but it's very frustrating because his fingers move on these particular hand sculpts and you obviously you put the gun in his hand and then you have to position his fingers into a, you know, holding the, you know, the gun and keep it there. But it does just fall off and as soon as you even look at him funny it will just drop out again you have to keep going back putting the gun in his hand so i just glued the gun into that hand as if that hand was uh, just a special kind of sculpted hand that came with the gun you know already in it so it will never fall out now well it does come loose sometimes i didn't use the strongest glue in the world because i wanted the option to just undo what i did if i wanted to but it just really saves all that stress of constantly thinking, damn, if I move him, the gun's going to drop out and I'm going to have to do that all again. Uh, so that is the only thing I've done to Robocop. Just glued the gun into that particular hand because I wanted him to be holding it constantly. Such an amazing figure. Here we have an amazing piece of film history made by Hot Toys. It's the one fourth scale T-800 endoskeleton from the first Terminator movie. And the reason he is in this video is because I do not like it when the eyes are not lit up on these endoskeletons. They just look, they just don't look alive. So I did something very crude, but it has been very effective and it works. Just a little bit of blue tack over where the eyes would light up. And then just that little bit of blue tack has been painted bright red to give the impression of, you know, nice bright red eyes. So he just looks a little bit more alive now because if those eyes were just dead and very, they're basically black uh, when the lights are not on. So it just, it, you know, you want to have him in a cool pose like he's coming for you. But what's the point of that if he looks like he's switched off? Unless you want to, you know, he just froze and maybe his power cell gave out or something. And he's just frozen in that last moment where he was about to tear your face off. But that's the only mod I've done is just uh, create the effect of uh, nice bright red eyes with a bit of blue tack and some red paint other than that. Oh, and I did uh, cover up the red lava effect or whatever that was. And it might not be lava. I think it is, though. It's, it's not blood. Uh, but covered it all up with these little stones and grivel, grivel, grist, <laughs> you know, grit, uh, stones and dirt, just to make it look pretty cool. I think that worked out a treat. That is actually from the one fourth scale Dark Knight Rises Batman. A little bit of... Um, scaffolding there or whatever you want to call it but just an amazing piece right there mostly die cast incredible the modifications to any hot toys predators are so subtle it's not really worth taking them off the shelf just to show you uh, the wolf predator the only thing i've done to him is i glued this cannon onto the um you know the movable section here because that cannon just wouldn't you know click into place I always wanted him to be dual wielding those bad boys. So I just used a kind of quite a loose, you know, not a very strong glue. It does come off again if I want it to, but that's the only thing I've done to him just to get that cannon on there and keep it in place. The only thing I've done to my Predator 2 City Hunter, um, just not really a mod really. It's just in order to get that skull uh, on his back there like it is in the film, a little bit of a black twisty tie, just holding that in place and just a nice little detail on the back of the city hunter there who is still looking just absolutely savage from that last pose session still rocking this look and that is it i didn't do anything to him i don't think nope yeah not much done to the hot toys predators they're pretty much stock 
And when it comes to the Hot Toys Alien stuff, uh, I had to do some fixing with my Alien Warrior because there was a bit of a rotting issue with the mouth area. So I used, uh, what's it called, Mod Podge, something like that, and just had to fill in where it was rotting away and then repaint it. And this guy, the big chap, I glued his mouth shut because I think it's just more iconic with this particular alien for just that teeth shut tight sneer. Uh, and I also sprayed him with a clear kind of acrylic uh, spray just to seal him. And uh, he has a nice wet look now, but he's very, he's not sticky or anything like that. He's totally dry. But just the rubber body they used, it is a nice tough rubber. But over time, I noticed it was becoming more and more rough feeling. Uh, very smooth when I first got it and as I would hold him later on down the years I thought he feels a lot rougher than he used to uh, So I thought I'd get in there before it got any worse and just completely spray the whole figure with that clear um, Acrylic kind of spray it just seals the deal and um, you know seals in the flavor But yeah, other than a glued shut mouth and a resprayed body uh, That's all I've done to the big chap and uh, nothing done to Ripley and that is it for the aliens. The unofficial dread figure has the same mods that everyone had to do to this. Uh, you just had to paint the gold sections yourself and just make it more movie accurate. So that's the only thing I did to him. Just painted the kind of shoulder armor there, a nice kind of worn bronzy kind of gold color. Okay, and onto these big Batman figures now. This is the Hot Toys 1 4th scale Batman Begins figure didn't come out too long ago, still pretty recent. And this is one that I've set up as the first night out Batman. And that is the Bruce Wayne head that comes with this figure with the balaclava over the face. And if you check the channel, you'll see how I managed to uh, protect the skin from the face from the black material of the balaclava to prevent any staining. I basically, it's very crude. But I just um, completely covered his head and face in um, clear sort of plastic and then used sellotape over the clear plastic to hold it all together. And then with a scalpel, very carefully cut the plastic away from where the holes in the mask would be so that when the mask was over the top, it didn't look like there was anything else going on. It just looks like the mask is literally on the head sculpt, but there is uh, just a layer of um, clear plastic sellotaped all together underneath the mask, uh, creating a barrier between the skin from the sculpt and the balaclava to prevent any staining. So that is 100% safe and you'd never know that it's there. And I'm so glad I did it. It was really quite tricky to do, but very effective. And massive shout out to Mike in Germany for sending me this incredible little gift. He had this, um, it's metal, it's really heavy, uh, sort of Batman Begins style um, Batarang. Very heavy though, I mean, you can hear that there. I was trying to find a good place to put it. This uh, base here was actually from a DC Collectibles Batman Begins statue. So I just uh, keep this here for now. That might not sit there properly, I'll have to fix that later. But massive shout out to Mike in Germany for sending that. Mike in Germany is the guy who repainted my Trick or Treat Studios 2018 Michael Myers mask, which is here. And videos on that on the channel if you want to find out more and see that in more detail. And a lot more Michael Myers content. It's it's all on there. Just uh, go checking it out for yourself. And here we have the Hot Toys 1 4th scale Dark Knight Rises Batman. And this has an Unreal Customs wired cape which just enhances this piece uh, greatly. It really does take it to another level. It's a really, really strong set of wires in this thing. And you can do anything you want with that. You need to go back and check out the initial videos I made when I first got this cape because I really went to town with the poses. Some of them were pretty epic. Uh, you can pose this figure really well uh, and coupling that with this cape, you can literally, like I'm thinking of the moment when Catwoman's on the rooftop with that Daggett guy, is it? And then she gets surrounded by Bane's um, mercenaries or gang or whatever the hell you want to call them. And Batman <laughs> in that really over the top uh, voice says um, you know they know they just don't care and then he leaps down and spreads his cape and kind of lifts his legs up and sort of just swoops down but you can actually do that pose with this figure and this cape so I need to uh, try that because I did try it once before but it was a busy day and I didn't get to make a video but it is possible 
So an amazing cape there from Unreal Customs. Okay, and there we have the Enter Bay Batman, which simply has a velvet cape, which I tried to make one of these myself, and I think I still have it lying around. But in the end, I did go on eBay and got lucky and found this. I do get asked about this cape a lot, and this cape I actually found on eBay. can't remember exactly who the person was who made it, but I do know that when I've tried to look for them recently, I haven't been able to find them. So um, I know obviously Jackson XU and Unreal Customs make capes for these figures. I don't think they use velvet, but I just really love the velvet look with this particular piece. Now, there was a bit of um, a Frankenstein situation where I made the ultimate one-fourth scale Batman we'll look at in a minute. But this uh, belt you're seeing on here, that's actually just the Necker one-fourth scale Batman Begins belt. Because he's nice and high up and you can't really see it. And plus it is a very accurate bronze colour. But I actually wanted to use his belt on the Frankenstein version down here, which is comprised of many different parts. So we'll just come around the side a little bit. But that is the only thing that's been done. Just a bit of a belt swap and a custom velvet cape on the Enter Bay Batman, which is my number one piece in the collection. Above everything else, this right here is the ultimate number one spot holder. Before we pan down to this last one here, I will just uh, give a mention to Anthony Sang. I almost forgot to say thank you, Anthony Sang, for this awesome Batarang here. This is actually really sharp. It's plastic compared to the metal one, but it's actually sharper than the metal one. So that just sets off that display there very nicely. So on to the last big Batman figure, and this is the Franken-Bat. This is uh, made from all different parts. The mission here was to um, put together a big Batman figure that I could pose however I want, never have to worry about the suit getting damaged, have fun with it and just enjoy it, and have something where I could display him with his fists up, really aggressive looking, and just, it's absolutely badass. Now this is um, the Necker body, the Enterbay belt, the Hot Toys cowl and mouth plate, um and you've just got the yeah those are the stock gauntlets that come with the necker body because you can't remove these they're just part of the sculpt the cape is absolutely stunning and that is the stock necker cape believe it or not uh, and he's on the hot toys one four scale batman begins base but everything is necker apart from the cowl with the mouth plate the belt uh, and that's it everything else is necker but it's just incredible absolutely amazing people um do say they don't like the joints but that's what you know stuff like him is for or uh well that one over there there's no joints they're all perfectly realistic and seamless but this one has joints because with a suit like this you either go for full rubber which you can't really do much with just standing there museum pose or you have to go uh, solid sculpt with articulation and joints in order to have some fun and that is exactly what the uh, purpose behind this one was and I should really change up the pose. It's been like that for a long time. But it is inspired by that famous picture from Batman Begins where he was doing his costume test. And he's in that pose there. Or something very similar to it. But there they are. Okay, so we're all done. Massive shout out again to Whit Reese for a cool idea for a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section if you did. And don't forget to like the video. It helps me out a lot. Uh, subscribe hit the bell icon and that way you won't miss out on any of the future content there is a lot of stuff coming up on the channel very soon quite a bit of michael myers action coming at you uh, which i will go into more detail on that later on quite a few headless figures here at the moment because i'm getting them rehaired uh, thanks to chino in the usa he's amazing at that and i really can't wait to see what he does i'm sending him about three or four different heads uh, so they will be back when they're ready and i will look forward to showing you the results the Hot Toys 1 4th scale Joker from the Dark Knight should be released soon. I'm getting the exclusive version. It's already paid for a long time ago. So as soon as that comes out, it's on its way. Full unboxing, review, the full treatment, poses, comparison, the whole thing. Look out for that. It's going to be sweet. Um, comic books are coming back to the display that used to be up here. Uh, I'm going to use a different technique this time. It didn't work out too well last time. They just started to sag in the frames got something much better in mind this time but it's going to be so nice to get the beautiful artwork and the comics back on display again it's really going to complete the room and you can see where the nails are from where the frames used to be but i'm using a totally different setup this time and i really can't wait to show you how that all looks because it completes the room uh, completely just looks absolutely fantastic so 
And that is it. Like I was saying, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram at Dean Knight Free Free Free. Check me out on Patreon if you want to help the channel keep tooting along. And I will see you real soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.